welcome to the Rock Interview Series with host Thomas S. Orwatt Jr. Welcome to episode number 42 of the Rock Interview Series. I'm Thomas Orwatt Jr. It is December 21st, 2021, and my special guest for this feature is vocalist and songwriter Terry Alouse of the 80s hard rock band XYZ. During this feature, Terry discusses a brand new band that he's currently involved with called the Land of Gypsies. This group recently released their fantastic self-titled 11-track debut record on Frontiers Music. If you are a fan of well-crafted melodic songs and like bands such as Foreigner, Bad Company, and Whitesnake, you will love the Land of Gypsies. Terry also gives us an update on the status of XYZ and reflects on the band's first two studio records. The self-titled XYZ record released in 1989 and produced by Don Dokken and Hungry, which was released in 1991. Over their career, XYZ have sold over 2 million records worldwide. In addition, Terry discusses his time with the legendary classic rock band Great White, in which he was the lead vocalist from 2010 to 2018. He also reflects on his abrupt dismissal from the band and how it ultimately became a blessing in disguise. So here he is, Terry Alouse. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Rock Interview Series. This is number 42, and today we have a special guest with us. Today we have none other than Terry Alouse from the band XYZ and also with the band Land of Gypsies. And today we're going to be talking about his new project, The Land of Gypsies. And of course, we'll be talking about XYZ a little bit later in the interview. So Terry, um, sure. how have you been? I've been great. Thank you for asking. I've been uh, very, uh, I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed, and uh, I worked a lot. I've been working a lot, and um, very, very happy to the way things are going. Very happy. Well, let's let's focus right now on your new project, The Land of Gypsies, Terry. Uh, you released your record on December 10th. Great yes. record. Very, very, very melodic. A lot of great harmonies. Great, well-crafted songs. Um, yeah, it's it's really a, a, an outstanding record. Uh, tell me a little bit about this project and, and uh, how how did you come about uh, forming this band? Well, Frontiers Record contacted me asking me if I wanted to put a new band together. If I was interested in doing that, I said yeah. Um, so they uh, put me in touch with a great producer named Fabrizio Grossi, an Italian producer. I've never met him before. Um, but uh, we had a great connection right away. Immediately, we got along well. And uh, he put a band around me of um, uh, um, great musicians, uh, Sergei uh, Simic on guitar, um, AJ on drums, um, uh, Eric Ragnio on, uh, on the keys, and of course, uh, Fabrizio playing bass. And uh, I presented a lot of songs. Sergei presented a lot of songs as well. And uh, here we are today. Yeah, you uh, released your first video for the record a couple months ago called Shattered. Uh, right. Tell me a little bit about that particular song. I mean, that, that's another, that's an outstanding track. Thank you. Song is about being shattered by someone uh, for any reason. Could be a, a business reason, could be a, a love relationship. In that particular case, it was a, a business deal that went sour. And... Um, I was really uh, disappointed on the way things turned out uh, to be and don't think I deserved it. I thought I would get betrayed. But instead of um, instead of uh, staying at the bottom of the ocean, like like when it happened, when you get shattered, you know, uh, um, uh, swimming in, in, in my in my thoughts and my sorrows, I decided to gather myself and um, and come up with a new album. And, you know, here I am today. And, you know, sometimes. As I said to you, uh, what defines who you are is not necessarily, um, what defines a person as far as I'm concerned is sometimes what we do when we reach a certain level in life, whether it's success or, or defeat, is how we react, react to that that makes us who we are. Uh, we can be a good person uh, when we are successful or we can be an asshole or, or we can be deep into sorrows and giving up when we are, we've reached the bottom of the ocean. So it's really how we react to the situation that determines our character, uh, uh, who we are. And um, I'm a fighter, I'm a survivor. And um, I, I was thinking a very positive person. I, you know, when somebody does me wrong, I, I, of course it hurts me, but 
instead of just dwelling in the, into the the, the 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 dark and the negative, I try to find out the good in it and say why, what can I get out of it? What is it I can get out of it? And um, I uh, decided to um, decided to 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 come up with the music for that song. And Jake in Northrop, my my good partner, understood that I was coming, uh, were talking about, and wrote those great lyrics. First heard the song. I thought that maybe it was like a response to your uh, situation that you had with Great White. Well, completely. Yeah. <laughs> Without <laughs> you saying that, actually saying it, yeah, it's it's kind of obvious that that was the case, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I had nine years with them, three great albums, um, 560 shows, so many sold out venues. You know, I had a great time. Um, um, and I was a loyal singer. I didn't mess up uh, any shows. I never canceled anything. You know, I don't drink. I don't, I don't do all that stuff. It was a hard time because uh, following the steps of, of, of a great singer like Jack, Jack Russell was not easy. Jack is a great singer. And a lot of people did not accept me at first. They were like, oh, screw that guy, you know, you know. And I did not try to be a clone like, like a lot of people would do. So, oh, you got to sing like Jack, you know. I said, no. Jack is a great singer and Jack is a friend of mine, but Jack will respect me because I sing like Terry Lewis, although I would, I will um, uh, be true songs and the melodies, I will still bring my own little thing. And he loved that. He and I talked about it. He said, you, uh, you for that. I said, yeah. I said, nobody's Jack Russell, but nobody's Terry Lewis. And uh, that's the beauty of it. And, and so um, when I get fired for a reason that I still, that is still unknown to me, to be honest with you. Um, when I got fired, the way I got fired bothered me. Being fired didn't bother me because it happens to everybody. Everybody gets fired from every position. Everybody's replaceable. So I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is when somebody gives you a big hug and say, hey, brother, I'll see you Monday, okay? Oh, cool. And on Monday morning, you get an email saying, hey, thanks for your service. Have a nice life. You're like, what? You know? That I don't like. I don't like, I, I don't like cowards. If you want to tell me something, if you want to tell me to, to, to screw myself, fuck myself, I'm okay with that. Tell it to my face. Don't go giving me a big hug, telling me how much you love me. Uh, and then on Monday morning, send me an email telling me uh, you're fired. Being fired is not the point. It's how you get fired yeah. and why you, I'm like, why? I, I, I have never found out actually. I still don't know was very disappointed in that but not disappointed at all with my work with the band i had a great time with the band um the band is fantastic uh, great musicians uh, um audi was my brother so was scotty mark and i always got along very well the other one i, f I forgot his name not not so much but um um you know it is what it is life goes on and again it's nothing negative about it you have to dig inside of yourself and look at the positive you know what can i do to rebuild myself what can i do to move forward and that goes for everything in life not just music but for after a divorce for example the person would lose his wife or husband or whatever and then you find yourself all alone well guess what if you think positive and if you give yourself a chance you will find somebody else that would love you for who you are it may not be the same type of person you had before but then again you don't want the same person you want something else so you have to think positive in life and 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 act positive not just think positive just act positive and do and be grateful for what you have and uh from that on move on and and you know share your love and your wealth and whatever you have with other people that's what it is yeah one, one of the things that i feel that a lot of people found surprising was immediately after your firing from Great White, Jack Russell came to your defense. Jack Russell, the original singer of Great White, yeah. and said that it was a it was a despicable act the way that you were fired. How, how did yeah. that feel having Jack come to your defense like that? I was surprised. I had no idea Jack would do that. He he became my friends right away. He's like Terry, uh, I, I I really love your singing. I admire you, and and you're not a you're not a clone. You're not a bozo. You're not you don't say bad things about me and. And I say, I have nothing bad to say about you, my friend. You are a great singer. You've accomplished a lot more than 99% of the people out there. And um, 
for whatever reasons you were fired, what I don't really know because, you know, whatever I've heard is through different sources, so I can't say anything, but I know that how much I respect you as a singer. And, uh, and that's all, you know, he, he, him and I became friends and said, hey, Terry, that's Jack talking. Hey, Terry, we should work together, you know. <laughs> So he always imitates me. He sound he, he thinks like I sound like Pepper the Pew, and you know, I'm like, ah, I think it's funny, you know. So him and I get along very well, you know. Yeah, one of the things that I also uh, found interesting was that you actually invited uh, the person uh, Mitch Malloy, who replaced you, on stage once before, and and you felt that he kind of like upstaged you while he was on stage. Well, call it insecurity, my friend. I'm very secure. Uh, I have nothing. Uh, I'm very, very secure. Uh, um, I always relate to that to martial arts. As a martial artist myself, when I spar with people, when I spar with people in the, in the ring or, or when I teach or when I take a lesson or whatever, I don't try to outstage anyone because I'm secure with myself. If I can learn from someone, then it's great and I'll be happy to learn. But I never, ever um, think of, of outstaging anybody trying to to teach the guy a couple of, give a couple of low blows by just like, hey, man, check this out, you know, how about this one, you know? I don't do stuff like that. I, I'm very secure with myself. I'm not overly secure and overly pretentious, but I'm secure. I know what I can and can't do. Now, whatever Mitch does, I think that's, that's his name, what Mitch, I forget his name. Um, uh, I wish him the very best. I have nothing bad to say about him. Um, does it fit the band Great White? It's not up to me to say that. It's up to the fans. Um, personally, again, it was a blessing for me to be fired. Not the way I got fired, but it was a blessing. A blessing because now I, I rebuffed myself a different way and I'm a fighter, dude. You know, it's like being knocked out. You got two choices. You give up your career or you put the gloves on and you go back to the, the, the gym and you said, all right, what can I do? I need to, I need a new team. What can I do? Teach me something I don't know. And that's what I did. I went back and worked with different people. Yeah. Well, the land of gypsies record definitely is a statement record for sure from you. I mean, like I said, it's, it's really a, a great record. Um, you have a second single that you just recently filmed called rescue me. Um, yeah. wh when is that single going to be released for everyone to view? Uh, I think with the video, according to frontier it's going to be released. Um, February 2nd or 5th, I'm not quite sure. The song is about love. You know, I'm a big believer in love, love for, love for, for uh, toward my friends, love for, for animals, love for this world, love, you know, I'm a very positive person and love is a very beautiful thing, but personal love has always been a hard thing for me to find. Finding a soulmate has always been very difficult for me. Um, and I'm still searching. So I decided to write a song about that and be honest with people and said, hey, this is me talking and I, I, I see you guys have what I don't have and I wish I had what you don't have. You know, I, I, I work a lot on a cruise ship. I have a contract with the Royal Caribbean and I headline, um, I headline with the, my band. We'll have a, an all-star band and we headline uh, the cruise ships and on the big venues, you know, big thing, you know, not a lounge band, you know, but, but we do that. But I see a lot of lovers, what I mean by lovers, people have been around for a long time together, walking hand in hand. And and it's it touches me because I think, oh my God, it's beautiful. Love exists. So I want that. I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe some people say, oh my God, Terry, you the pussy. Well, they can think whatever they, they want. The most beautiful thing in the world is finding your partner, finding love, love for your kids, love for your friends. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. Hate doesn't exist. Hate, should, I mean, exists, but should not exist. It's a terrible thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Now, is, is this a uh, band going to tour at all? Or is this just like a, a you know, a, a recording uh, studio project? I got to be honest with you. At first, it was a recording project. And I didn't know. I said, ah, I'm just going to do an album, you know. But now, I'm getting so many requests for touring and everything and so many interviews. And, uh, and it's... The album's starting to chart. I'm like, wow. So I, you know, I think uh, if we get the right offers, we will, uh, we will do it. We will tour. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, can Can you tell all the viewers the uh, members of the band? Of course. Um, AJ on drums is from Nashville, Tennessee. 
Um, it's a great drama. Um, uh, Serge uh, Simic on the on the, on the guitars and and backup vocals. Um, he's your European. He's a wonderful, wonderful underrated guitarist, and I I hope he's gonna get he, he, way more than what he, he got. He, he's getting so far because he really deserves it. I am. It was a pleasure working with him. Uh, Serge is a great guitarist. So anyway, him, of course, my my dear friend uh, Fabrizio uh, Grossi on on bass and production. He produced the album, um, and on keys, uh, Eric Rani on keys, on keys, easy guy to work with, very talented guy. And additional guitars were done by Jake and Northrop. All the lyrics were done by uh, Jake and Northrop, by the way, and most of the music was done by myself or um, and or Serge. Hmm. Well, one of the songs that I really thought was incredible was a song called Long Summer Day. I mean, talk oh, about a catchy song. I mean, geez, if it was like 20 years ago or 30 years ago, that would be like a number one hit. It was, it's, just, <laughs> it's just so catchy. I mean, you hear it for the first time. It's like, wow, this, this, this song is really incredible. Tell me a little about a bit about that song. And, and, and do you agree with me uh, on it being like a really standout song? It, thank you. It's, I wrote it for somebody else 10 years ago. Um, I wrote it for somebody else, not for me, because I, 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 I'm a songwriter and I write songs for people, you know, for a lot of, I'm a, I'm a ghostwriter, I, I would say. I wrote the song for this person and the deal didn't go through. So I kept the song, of course. And then uh, when, when um, uh, uh, we were looking for another song to add to the album, we were missing one song. Uh, I presented the song to Fab, Fabrizio and say, oh, I love that song, great, catchy. I'm like, really? So yeah. So um, um, JK um, came up with the lyrics and um, he, he definitely got the vibe, the, 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 the melody. I mean, I came up with the melody, but he came up with the right words to match that melody. And uh, I was very, very pleasantly surprised when he wrote those lyrics. I was like, wow, what a beautiful title. I didn't come up with the title, he did. You know, Long Summit is beautiful. I want to talk a bit about uh, XYZ now. Um, you guys are doing a uh, reunion, a 20-year reunion tour, I believe, this year, or actually next year, correct? Next year, yeah. We're going to be doing dates. Um, we have dates, but, you know, Thomas, the thing is, Pat is my brother. I grew up with Pat. So we have, um, we're like cats and dogs. We fight all the time, but we love each other. You know, it's what it is, you know? And we push each other to be better. That's one thing about being friends is the fact that we always push each other question oh are you sure you can you cannot do better than that are you sure you cannot write better than that that's who we are so we have an album ready to go and we're working with a great producer it will be released sometime this year but we're not exactly sure when so far we've booked a bunch of dates um usually big festivals um and uh you know m3 and uh masters of rock and all the things and I'm excited about that, you know. Yeah. Would you be interested in going out on a package tour without, you know, with some other like 80s bands, like, you know, like a White Snake or something like that? Would you be interested in doing something like that where you go out for like a couple months in a row? If the offer is right, absolutely. I will always be uh, interested to uh, to tour, to do whatever, you know, I want to see the fans, you know. I do music, you know, Thomas, I do things because I love the music. You know, I mean, of course I get paid and it's fine, you know, but I get paid other ways way better than I get paid when I do music, you know, I'm, as a songwriter and, and, and voiceover artist and whatever I do for a living, I get, I get, okay. So my point is I do music because I love it. I love to sing. I love the fans. I love, so yes, I'd love to go on tour. Uh, the day I'll stop loving that is the day I will uh, stop singing. I'll say, no, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm totally, I'm, I'm giving all I can give and I'm done. But right now, no, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. I, I thank you for the, uh, the interview. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful and, you know, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, one, one of the interesting things about XYZ, um, you guys had your first record kind of like late, uh, you know, during the whole like, you know, I, I don't want to call it hair metal, but like, you know. was. Okay, we'll call it hair metal then. I mean, in 1989, you released that record, and and that was pretty, that scene was starting to kind of like you know, alternative was becoming a little popular then. And but you released two really good records. You still managed to sell about two million records worldwide. 
Uh, both records are were incredible. The first record was produced by Don Dawkin. What was it like working with Don Dawkin, and, and how did he become involved in the first XYZ record? Working with Don was great. I learned a lot from him. Um, it was the height of his career back then. He was at the height of his career back then in 1989, 1990. And I was a big Don fan. And, and um, I, I, it was easy to work with. It did change the sound a lot. The sound was much more raw back then before we worked with him. It was much closer to Land of Gypsies, to be honest with you. Not so overproduced. But back then, that was the, the style. That was his vision. Uh, my vision would, be, would have been to be closer to Land of Gypsies now. Was I right? Was he right? I don't know. What I know is the band became successful and Don Darkin did great for me. And I am grateful for him. And to this day, I still talk to him. We're still good friends. I admire him. Yeah. And then, then there's the second record that um, you released uh, in 1991, Hungry. That was another another great uh, record. You had a, a couple songs. I got MTV, Airplay. And, yeah. uh, and, and tell me a little bit about the, the, the mindset of the band that I mean, it's 1991. Nirvana's right around the corner. I mean, could you did you see it coming? No, I didn't. I have to be honest with you. I didn't see it coming. I was so into my own world, you know. And uh, we were touring at the time. We did some say, some dates with Soundgarden. We did some dates with a uh, Alice in Chains. I just didn't see it coming. Although I was looking at those guys, thinking, "Hey, I don't get it." You know, I don't get it. Now I get it. It had to change. The, the bands were getting all the '80s bands were getting to. Um, cookie cutters, same type of music, same type of chorus, same type of video. Yeah, it had to change. Um, and I'm glad it did. Um, came up, they came up with a sound that was much more raw, you know, things. Now, change is good, my friend. Sometimes you bring something else, you know. So I, I was, uh, I didn't see it coming. And when we were recording the album, we were a little bit, we didn't know how to, what to do because the truth is, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the sound garden kind of vibes, it was all over the, 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 the eighties, the eighties bands. And we were, when we recorded the album, we're like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, but I was like, nah, nothing's going to happen. And no, I was wrong. Hmm. Yeah. Was there uh, any talk about bringing Don Dawkins back into, uh, producing that record? I don't recall. Uh, Don said, yes. I talked to him the other day. He said, yeah, you, uh, I just didn't want to do an album with you because you said bad things about me. I don't recall that, you know, it's the eighties. I don't know. I don't recall anything bad, but maybe he, I don't know. I don't recall that. I got to be honest with you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I be sure of my answer. I don't know. Okay. Well, well, Terry, I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you. I, I I'm, Really hoping that XYZ comes to uh, the Buffalo area. I'd love to see the band again. I saw you guys in uh, 1989 when you played uh, the Sky Room. I'm sure you don't remember that show, but it was. Oh. A... <laughs> I wouldn't think you would, but uh, I remember it, and it was a great show. So uh, I, thank, I thank you very much, Terry, and, and best of luck. And like I said, Land of Gypsies is an amazing record. Uh, everyone viewing this, uh, definitely check it out. It is a killer rock record. Uh, sounds a, a little bit like, you know, like a foreigner, white snake, bad company, but so original and, and has some great harmonies and melodies and well-crafted songs. I appreciate that. All right. I got to go now. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, Terry. Thank you. Bye-bye.